pocket three, the pocket two. Let's do this. The pocket three is quite a bit larger and when in its case, it becomes massive in comparison to the pocket two. It still fits in my back pocket, but I feel it much more. And when the tripod adapters are attached, the Pocket 3 towers over the Pocket 2 and sticks out to a comical degree. So for portability, the Pocket 2 wins the point. However, the way the Pocket 3's tripod adapter attaches and detaches is much better. Whereas on the Pocket 2, I can't get mine off without a fight. So let's give the Pocket 3 a point for that. Both the Pocket 2 and Pocket 3 have joysticks for controlling pan and tilt. They're just binary switches, not proportional controls. So when panning or tilting, the speed is not variable and there's a sudden stop at the end of the movement. The Pocket 2 has the advantage of accepting the much beloved controller wheel, which has proportional control, allowing for smoother movements. So I think the Pocket 2 deserves a point for that. But it does not have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi built in, whereas the Pocket 3 does. So a point for the Pocket 3. The word revolutionary might be too strong here, but the large rotating display on the Pocket 3 dramatically improves the usability of the camera. Once you use it, there's just no going back to the tiny display on the Pocket 2. It's also a lot brighter and easier to see outdoors, so the Pocket 3 wins a point for the display. These are life-size cutouts of the two sensors. The Pocket 3's is larger and has larger pixels, which means better low-light performance and better dynamic range. So a point goes to the Pocket 3. They both take photos. The Pocket 3 photos have a bit more contrast. The Pocket 2 has a 64 megapixel photo mode, but I think that's more of a marketing gimmick than anything else. Some people like it though. The Pocket 2 can do the more standard 4x3 aspect ratio, whereas the Pocket 3 only has 16x9 and square. The Pocket 2 can do up to 8 second long exposures, whereas the Pocket 3 is limited to 1 second. Though the Pocket 3 can get shallower depth of field with close-up shots. I never bothered using the Pocket 2 for stills aside from when I was first reviewing it, and I don't think I'll use the Pocket 3 for that either. I have better cameras for still shots. But if I had to choose one, I'd choose the Pocket 3, mainly because the large display makes it much easier to compose the shot, so I'm giving the point to the Pocket 3. In my opinion, the video footage on the Pocket 3 just looks better, regardless of where or how I'm shooting. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it after YouTube's compression, but there's a significant increase in quality, so a point goes to the Pocket 3. The dynamic range is a lot better on the Pocket 3. In these shots, the Pocket 2 blows out the sky more. The dynamic range really impressed me on the 3. So another point for the Pocket 3. In my opinion, the colors on these cameras are so similar, it's often difficult to tell them apart. They're both natural and vibrant without being overcooked like a typical action camera. But because the Pocket 3 has better dynamic range, it tends to hold on to those colors more easily in difficult scenes where the Pocket 2 would blow them out. So I think I'm gonna give the point to the Pocket 3. Without a doubt, the Pocket 3 is the superior slow motion camera. It can do 4K 120, whereas the Pocket 2 can only do 1080p 120. Both cameras can do 1080p 240, and surprisingly, the Pocket 2 actually looks sharper. But the 4K 120 on the Pocket 3 is super nice. So the point goes to the Pocket 3. The stabilization is great on both. I wouldn't really say there's much difference. So they both get a point. The 
larger sensor, or more to the point, the larger pixels on the Pocket 3, make it the clear champion for low light footage. So another point for the Pocket 3. They both have perfectly good audio for vlogging, but to my ears, the Pocket 3 sounds better. It can do 4K 120, whereas the Pocket 2 can only do 1080p 120. It can do 4K 120, whereas the Pocket 2 can only do 1080p 120. So a point for the Pocket 3. The Pocket 2's tracking was an atrocity against pocket lovers everywhere. It was far worse than the Pocket 1 and basically unusable in many of the situations where I would use the camera. The Pocket 3 isn't perfect in this regard and still struggles in some circumstances, but it's leaps ahead of the Pocket 2 and in most situations it works well. Even in scenes where it struggles a lot, it does vastly better than the Pocket 2. So another point for the Pocket 3. They both have good battery life, but the Pocket 3 lasts quite a bit longer. It also supports power delivery for much faster charging. This clip is in real time, it's not sped up. So a point to the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 is about 50% more expensive than the Pocket 2, and now open box returned units can be found for even less. So a point goes to the Pocket 2. The Pocket 2 is still a great camera, and it's a lot more affordable than the Pocket 3. It's also a lot more pocketable, but the Pocket 3 brings us video quality and usability that's on a higher level. With the 10-bit color and better dynamic range, low light and slow motion, you can get more professional looking footage. And if that matters to you, it's worth the difference in price. The larger display makes it so much more enjoyable to use. I've always said that I think of the Pocket 2 as more of a Pocket 1.5, better in some ways, worse in others but I think the Pocket 3 deserves its title as a proper successor, and there's really just nothing else like it on the market. It seems like this time DJI really listened to the community and took note of what we wanted from a camera like this. If you want to see my full review of the Pocket 3, there's a link below. If you find this useful or interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.